Ugly. Fake. Loser. Stupid. Jerk. Fat. No one liked you. They called me ears. Fish lips. They would say that my accent sounded weird. You're fat and stupid. You have no life. Kids always made fun of me. Well, I was, I was a big heavy boy. I used to have highlights in my hair. I have a high voice. In my hair, to my eyebrows, to the way that I walk. I was always the shortest one, and that was the main thing that got me bullied. They will tear you apart with their words. Come here. I'm gonna punch you. Why is he bullying me? Should I stand up for my friend? Do I run? Do I fight back? How do we make it stop? Stop! They used to call me a whole bunch of names. I can't even remember them. It's funny, I can't even remember them now. In middle school and elementary, I was always made fun of because I was always in my books and I, and like I wasn't with the fashion, so I didn't have like the top lining clothes and all of that. They would just like move a table. Usually, they would try to avoid me. It made me feel out of place. Like I shouldn't be there. I didn't want to be there. Thinking about. Going to school the next day, it was just, I just didn't want to go, to back, go back to school the next day. Some days I would come home asking my mother to move me to a different school, move me to a different city, just not going back there at all. Other days I would have good days. Even for one day, when they're not there, you feel more comfortable. And although you may, you may feel weird, because without that one person, you feel like you're waiting for nothing. Like you're just sitting there waiting for someone to say something and nothing happens. But all good days come to a bad ending. On Sunday, I would be really, really cranky because that was the last day I would get a day off. I was feeling excited, but the thought be, but that was the first day of school, but then the next day they didn't want to go to school because they're just so mean. I was just a little nervous to go to school. I don't want to go to there. Well, when I wake up in the morning, I kind of stall a little bit because, I mean, my teacher's very nice, but these kids, I, I don't look forward to them being mean to me in, in, in any day. These kids are saying, like, you're so fat, you're so stupid. He was like, you know what I mean? Now you're just not, like, fat and stupid. Fat, you're fat and stupid. And then I hear, Henry, do you think I'm fat and stupid? Well, I always say no to not make him, like, feel bad, but I'm not, like, lying to him. He's not really fat and stupid. He's, well, I'd say a little bit chubby, but not fat and stupid. No, he's not stupid at all. Some kids that were saying it, I used to be friends with, and they just turned on me all of a sudden. Other kids that don't like me were friends with them too and said, you have one, you have a choice, it's me or him. And they chose that kid. I tried to keep it in. I don't want to show them um, um, it, that it, it feels it, like it's, it doesn't feel nice. Because if they do, then, then they find a weak spot. And I love to keep saying that to me. I, over the summer, I, was, I didn't eat like anything. And just to think I was going to be skinnier. Like, they need to have a, 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 like, a reason to be mean to me, not just do it. Hey, loser, out of the way. What's oh. wrong with you? <laughs> Nice shoes, loser. Well, I thought there was something wrong with me, that everyone is making fun of me. I've got to be different. I've got to be the one that doesn't fit in. So there's not something wrong with them at this point. It's me. When I was younger, I suffered from oh, bullying because of my lips, as you can see there kind of unusually large. So I would kind of get fish lips, things like that a lot. 
and my glasses too. I got those at an early age that contributed. And then the fact that my last name is Cheese didn't really help with the matter either. So I would get cheeseburger, cheese guy, things like that, that weren't really very flattering and just kind of making fun of my name. I'm a pretty sensitive kid, so I would kind of have to fight back the tears when I was getting called names. It really kind of hurt me emotionally. I, I, my grades kind of dipped a little bit because I stopped caring about you know what my grades were and started caring more about, oh, do these people like me? Are they gonna stop making fun of me? And that really kind of affected my focus. And it wasn't a very fun elementary middle school experience for me. You know what, guys? For me, getting bullied was tough. You know, it's really lonely, so you have to make sure you speak up. You have to tell a teacher, you have to tell a parent. Sometimes, um, in my school, um, people, they say, are you okay? They say, are you okay? You know what? And I help them up. You know what? You're smarter than me. That's better. So listen, this is what we're going to do. Because sometimes when you get bullied, it's like being alone. It's really tough. So you can talk to your teacher, you can talk to your principal, to your coach, or like Chase just said, you know what? You can ask that person if they're okay. But the main and the most important thing is to speak up. When I started uh, riding bikes, I used to go up to the racetrack and um, you know there were a lot of older guys up there who would always pick on me and push me around and tease me, call me names. Uh, sometimes they'd take my grips off. I was pretty young, I was in maybe seventh grade and that's really intimidating to be surrounded by people who are older and, and stronger and I looked up to some of them too. And so here were some of my idols who used to be my idols but then now they started picking on me and um, you know, you just come home and I felt like I was alone. And I was just sitting at the curb, I was crying. And uh, one of my friends came over to me and he said, well, you know, there's other kinds of bike riding. You know, you could race or you can also do tricks on a bike. And I never even thought about doing tricks on a bike. And so I kind of modified my bike. I went in the garage and started using some of my dad's tools. And uh, I put these pegs on my bike and um, I started doing tricks. When I was really down and, and feeling bad, you know, I always had my bike. My bike was always here for me. It, it never disrespected me. My bike never bullied me. I kind of tried to lay low, do as few things in school as possible. Just try to get through the day without being uh, made fun of. And then somehow they would still find me and, and then bully me. Bullies do that. They prevent you. They find out what you're going to do, and they go for it. They go for it. They try to get there before you. Sometimes they're just like looking at me like, what are you doing? Why don't you just run? I mean, because I'm a little too scared to run. I mean, it's kind of hard to run away from someone, you know, that's so, you know, big. And, you know, it, you kind of feel just frozen right there. After I've been bullied, you know, I feel like, gosh, what a day this has been. Help me, someone please help me. And then I'm afraid to go to the, I've, I just don't want to go to school the next day because I know what's going to happen. Big slap on the face, a big kick in the knee. And then I just feel like I'm not really brave enough to deal with this. Definitely discouraged and feeling just a little bit down inside and feeling just like, I feel so tiny, I feel like. It's all over, my life is over, I'm getting threatened by a bully. I feel like I can't do anything about it. Fight back, like really, it's self-defense. You're not wrong, you're trying to protect yourself. I would say some pretty harsh things back, and then after that, I wouldn't feel too good about it. They can like, demoralize you to the point that you do not have any kind of stand in the conversation and everyone's laughing at you, and you're just that odd man out. When it happens to me, I have the uh, kind of like a feeling that I should be doing something about it, maybe 
not not necessarily telling someone. It's not usually my first um, reaction to the situation. It's more like, should I be fighting back or something like that? Should I retaliate? It feels like an adrenaline rush. Like you want to do something. The person may be bigger than you, but you still want to because you just have that human impulse to fight back and to do something. And sometimes you fight back that impulse and you just don't do anything. Not a lot happened in school. I mean, it did happen, but a lot was online. When I got to school, it'd be really like, um, you'd feel really vulnerable. Like anyone could come up to you and say something bad. Like, I could just be walking in the halls and some kid comes up to me, oh, you're so fat, goodbye, and then push me to the locker. A lot of people would make fun of me until I made my video. I really liked that I did that. There's this one kid who has been bullying me since sixth grade and he saw the video and he came up to me in school and also like was online and he saw the video he told me that um, he was really sorry for bullying me and that was that was amazing because now I'm kind of friends with him and also there was there's a website called form spring and this kid was making fun of me and he saw my video and he was, you know, just being really mean to me and the kid who used to bully me that said sorry, he was sticking up for me. When I need help here at the racetrack, I can always find somebody to talk to. It's Trevor Baines in the fence. Pretty hard. But I know it feels like when you're being bullied, you're all alone. But you can find somebody to talk to. Find a teacher, a parent, or a friend, and they can help you. The only way to stop bullying is to speak up. I did bully kids. Um, I guess since I was bullied, not to use it as an excuse, but since I was bullied, I, uh, I saw the power that the bully had, and I guess I, I wanted that. So I would, uh, I guess I would bully kids as well. I thought, I thought it was cool, I thought it was funny, I thought it would impress my friends, make me look like more of a man, when at the end of the day, I just go home and feel terrible about it. It's not cool. It doesn't make you cool. Unfortunately, I was bullied and then I had a low you know, self-image for a little bit and I noticed that I was starting to pick on other kids um, that were different than me. You know, it's kind of just what I knew. I was used to being picked on and then I thought that's what you were supposed to do. I thought to be cool, maybe if I pick on this person, maybe I could, maybe people will think I'm cool. And um, really it didn't make me cool by picking on anyone else. You got to treat others with respect and nobody likes a bully. I still, to this day, I feel bad that I, I did that because that's not who I am. Well, if my, if my friends were there, they'd kind of, I had a few friends, kind of be like, come on, man, let's just go, let's walk away. But if I didn't really know anyone, then it'd kind of be like, they'd just stand there and look at it. Some would laugh, others would just not say anything. 
and that didn't help stop anything. The kids that do watch it are like encouraging them to be mean to me. Depending on the crowd, they could be laughing, they could be not laughing, they could just be staring. And that's when the feeling really comes on that you feel demoralized, you're just sitting there. Everybody's staring at you. They notice that bullying's happening and they're not saying anything about it and they're not like, they might not be necessarily encouraging it, but they're not doing anything to prevent it either. And they need to stick up for the people who are being bullied because if they were in that situation, they would want somebody to stick up for them too. Chevrolet, my dad, Jeff Burton. I saw kids being bullied, and I never stopped in and stopped it, you know what I mean? I never, I never, I kind of followed the crowd. I didn't jump in, but I also didn't stop it. So, you know, sometimes the crowd gets moving and you follow them and you don't, you don't stand up, and really, that's not the right thing to do. If you see one of your friends being bullied, even if you just go up to them afterwards and say, hey, are you okay, or how do you feel, Is, are, you, are you okay? That really does go a long way, and I know that I had a couple of really good friends who I'm still friends with to this day, you know, they always stood by my side. And um, th those are who your real friends are. I don't remember specifically having anyone like stand up to be an ally. I just remember lots of bystanders. So they would not, they wouldn't tell the bully to stop. They wouldn't come up to me afterwards and say, you know, I'm so sorry, what are you gonna do about it? Sometimes there's that odd coincidence when someone steps out and helps the person out. Sometimes it's surprising who steps up. With my friends, they've gone through bullying. I've seen it happen. What are you doing? Thank you. Later. So I've stood there and did, done nothing because I'm worried about them. I don't know why I didn't do anything. I could have done a lot of things. I could have, I could have told the teacher, I could have said something to make the bully go away, but not in a mean voice. I would just say, please leave my friend alone. If you've seen what happens to other kids that go and tell on bullying, the bully bullies them even more because they told on them. And they started saying snitches get stitches and then they would get, they, so the, I figured not to tell anyone because then they would get really angry and they would tease me more. I didn't really go to the teachers because, you know, that would be considered, I would be called a crybaby and a tattletale and I didn't really want that to be added to the list of names I was called. I definitely should have talked, I mean told my teachers, even going to the principal, especially because there were specific people that were continuously doing it. And when I didn't stop it, they felt that that was their freedom to just keep doing it. So while I thought that it was gonna stop the name calling, it was just helping condone it. I just wish I had spoke up sooner because it really would have made life a lot easier had I just spoken up sooner. When it, when, after the first day or first couple of days, I really wish I would have told someone, but instead I, I kept it inside. And I'd come home every day and I would be, you know, crying and, you know, just, I would be so bummed out. People don't realize there's a huge difference between tattling and telling. If you're tattling on somebody, you're just trying to get somebody in trouble. But if you're telling someone about a problem, like a bully, you're not tattling, you're actually trying to help somebody. It's okay to tell. Like some kids will call you a snitch or something, like a snitch is someone who will always tell. But like really they're just trying to protect themselves. Well, like, I tell my mom and dad, but they're, they're kind of like, they just no, don't really exactly understand. They're like, he's bullying you, he's bullying you, and the way they say it, it just seems like they don't really get it. Uh, I could go on about that. Parents, parents see it as, oh, it's just a bullying, and you need to grow up, you need to fight back, you need to start speaking more, but they just, they see it as, it's just this one thing but they're not in our shoes where they see everything and they feel everything. 
They just see that we're complaining to them. I wish they had understood that they were actually, it was more to it than it sounded. Sometimes the teachers think that these kids are like so nice. The teachers weren't helpful. They, they didn't do it. And, um, and like they didn't do it. They're like, they're just bullies. Because if we tell the teacher, we may get in trouble for something we absolutely did not do. I think that our teachers need to be able to recognize bullying better because I think that if they just kept like more of an open eye and an open mind that they would be able to see, wow, this really is happening around us. That can make a big difference. The race against bullying isn't going to be easy and the bullies just aren't going to let us win. So we got to stay strong and stick together and remember, speak up. Being a hero against bullying doesn't mean you have to fight. It means you can walk someone to class. It means you can ask someone if they're okay. Stop. It's not cool. It's not making you any more popular, smarter, prettier. The bullying is a pretty serious matter. It hurts people and you think that it's funny, but it's really not. It's not you, it's them. Be a hero. Speak up. Speaking out is talking to a parent, a teacher, even one of your friends. Look, I know parents don't always listen when we talk about bullying, when we speak up. If they don't hear you, keep telling them, keep letting them know, and speak up against bullying. Don't be afraid of what the other kids are gonna call you or of if you're gonna lose your friends. You could just tell someone, like get it off your chest, get it off your mind, and you'll feel better. As you can tell, it gets noisy around here sometimes, and you really have to speak up to be heard. So we need you to help us to stop bullying and speak up too. If it's go telling a parent, telling a teacher. Help your fellow teammate out, your classmate, teammates. It's the same thing, right? We're all on the same team. Speak up. You should always help. It's not funny. Dude, just stop. Stick up to the bully or tell an adult. It kind of sounds like Everybody says that, but that's kind of the right thing to do. Just talk to somebody, and I promise you, it's going to get better. Stop! It has been turned around, actually. I am a generally liked guy. I actually, my last name has become something that's a little more liked. I have a friend named Mac, so together we're Mac and Cheese. That's cool. I knew that I was building friends, so there wasn't really something wrong with me. It was the bullies, and now they're actually my friends. I guess my charm is just too much for some people. It's hard to hold back.